Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Julie and I make videos all about intentional parenting, motherhood, keeping your house clean, just how to do this thing called life. And I often make videos about things that I am struggling with. And today we're talking about things that I'm struggling with in motherhood. So if you don't know me, I have three kids, ages eight, six, and almost three. The eight and six year olds doing pretty good. I mean, obviously they need a lot less physical support than my two almost three-year-old who has big emotions but they all have their moments they're all entering different phases of life where i think i i think i've got it figured out and then they go and throw me for a loop i have been solo parenting a lot lately i don't want to call it single parenting i'm not a single parent i'm married i have a partner who supports me but he does have to travel a bunch for work. It's hard. We do not have family locally, but I think even if we did, it would still be hard. Let me tell you, crises happen a bunch when my husband is gone. It feels like they wait for me to be alone and then happen, but that's not true. Things happen. I need to be able to cope and manage with it. And at the back of my mind, I'm like, this is so hard. Why am I so bad at this? I suck at this. There are all of these feelings. So here are some of the things that I have been feeling are difficult. I've got my little list over here. If I'm looking down, I'm gonna share what I've been struggling with and how I have been trying to remedy that. First one that I struggle with uh, <laughs> is being on time. I will say there's a bit of a backstory to this. Growing up in my origin family, family of origin, there was always this narrative that Julie was always late for things or that I kept them waiting and they were gonna be late. Now, in my defense, it wasn't that I was late per se, it just said I wasn't super early. I have always been someone that's like kind of used every last second of a minute to get things done and that hasn't changed it's just been challenged and you know threatened even more as i became a parent and so i'm really trying hard to be on time I, i'm usually on time i'm just in a frazzled state when i get there and i don't want to feel like that i don't want to feel frazzled all the time and so i'm trying really hard to either maybe set myself a physical timer if i'm struggling be less confident in what i can achieve in a given amount of time i can't go grocery shopping work out read a book voice note a friend and go and pick up my daughter all in an hour i need to choose one or two of those activities it's being more realistic about what I can actually achieve and also even though I'm eight years into this parenting game not applying previous before I had children Julie to now Julie ways that I also influence time and being on time is I start prepping things way earlier I learned this lesson when my children were very young three and one kind of young if I wanted to get them in bed by seven which seems pretty reasonable I had to start dinner and bath time and just the winding down of the day at like 4 4:30. And when I tell people this, like when I've told coaching clients this in the past, they like look at me like I'm bonkers, but it's true. You can't rush children. That's an element. And unexpected things happen all the time, especially with kids. And so you really need to factor in so much time. And wouldn't it be nice to be finished with your whole bedtime routine by 6:30 and then you've got some bonus time and you can read some more, play, or get them into bed at 6:45? Like, wow, who would have thought that? Just trying to start things so much earlier. So if I have to go pick my daughter up at one o'clock, instead of getting ready at quarter to one, which is what I would usually do, I will start getting ready at like 12 or 12:15, just getting things ready. And if I have extra time to read some of my book or to I don't know have a cup of tea well good for me and then alongside that is simplifying activities and just not always adding things and adding things and adding things and I'm on my own I had to simplify our day and it was nice it was nice to just come home and not leave again. Something else that I struggle with, cooking diverse meals and getting my children to accept and eat a bunch of different things. I have this paranoia that they're gonna go to people's homes and have dinner with them and not eat anything on the plate or be like, mm, yeah, mm, uh. and then I have to remind myself like, Julie, what age did you go to other people's homes by yourself without your parents and eat dinner? And it was not eight, you know, maybe it was like 10, 12. And so with my, with my son, he is a lot more open to trying new food provided he's in the right mood i think i can work on him to not be not to say ear gross yuck in front of other people and, and i have to keep that in mind like it's a process it'll take time but it does start with us introducing a variety of food in the home you know and i will also caveat that i do eat basically everything if if I've served it at someone's house and I don't go, you yuck, gross. So I think there is some hope for us. I tend to get into sort of a recipe rut. I mean, part of simplifying life is kind of keeping meals the same, but then I feel like I'm not exposing them to enough different types of food and I want them to be able to eat. 
also finding it challenging with the two-year-old where she just wants to eat chocolate for breakfast. I wish I was lying. I wish I was exaggerating, but I'm noticing that things are shifting a little bit. And whilst I do not keep a lot of junk food in our home for this exact reason, but actually she's doing me a favor too, right? She's reducing temptation for me as well. I'm noticing that she, the more I just kind of relax about it and just introduce things very slowly, she's starting to eat more. Reducing her ability to eat snacks constantly makes her more hungry for dinner. And I just have to, I have to let it go and know that she's not gonna be ruined. It's a process she's gonna evolve and eventually she won't be allergic to everything that's green. Something else I struggle with is going to bed early because in previous videos, you might have heard me talk about how I like to wake up early. That sets up my day. It's really nice to get a lot of stuff done before my kids even wake up and just to have some time to breathe awake. But going to bed early is a struggle because for all the reasons that you probably think if you're a parent, you know, you don't feel like you have any personal time, you have no time to yourself, you are just go, 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 you wanna relax, you kind of, you mourn that pre-child time you had in the evenings. Last night, I couldn't get my three-year-old, two-year-old to bed until something like 8.30. I wanna go to bed at nine so I can wake up at five or 5.30. That leaves me with 30 minutes. I hadn't even showered yet. We were still getting stuff ready for the next day. I am trying my best to get into bed and to read because when I read, I naturally am sleepy. I can only read a few pages and I naturally want to go to bed. It's very helpful for getting you to want to fall asleep, for increasing that sleep pressure. I have set alarms in the past where I'm like, go to bed. No, really go to bed. 15 minutes later, go to bed. The, the way we treat our children's bedtime kind of, I sort of have to do that with myself and it takes discipline and it's really hard. I've also found that all I want to do is scroll on my phone. I think I can reward myself with a little bit of scrolling in the evening to wind down, provided I'm in bed early enough, nine-ish, and provided I'm gonna read a little bit afterwards. So I'm gonna save a little bit of energy to read afterwards, provided I haven't scrolled the whole day. Getting up early and reading when my mind is the freshest, that's when I should be like dedicating a lot of that energy to think in the morning. And then in the afternoon or the evening, when I have a five minutes of downtime or whatever, rewarding myself but not spending my whole day on my phone i've also put limits on my phone so i cannot be on instagram for more than like an hour a day youtube is another one that i could spend a lot of time on reducing that as well but not restricting it completely it's like being on a diet i'm not restricting chocolate completely i'm still allowing myself a little bit so that i'm not like obsessed and craving it i think that's for me and my personality that works pretty well. This links into going to bed early is being tired all the time. I listened to a podcast recently where they spoke about having a delay in caffeine in the morning helps to get rid of all that fog that the caffeine kind of masks. And now I can't remember the name of adenosine. So in the morning, the theory goes, or the research tells us that you have adenosine built up in your body that it accumulates throughout the day and it makes you sleepy at night. Then in the morning when you wake up, especially if you're using an alarm and you haven't like naturally woken up, the adenosine is still in your system. And when you have caffeine, it binds to the adenosine receptors. Who knew this was gonna become a biology lesson? It masks that feeling and you feel like awake. But as the caffeine wears off, when it lose its potency in an hour, two hours, three hours, you still have that aden adenosine built up. So then you start to feel sleepy, then you feel like you need another cup of caffeine. The hack is to wait an hour or 90 minutes before you have your first cup of coffee or tea so that the adenosine has like fully worn out of your body. You actually feel alert and awake without a stimulant. She recommends having a glass of water to hydrate. This is Mel Robbins, by the way. I'll link the podcast episode down below if you're interested. Having a cup of water instead of your cup of coffee and then waiting and then having your coffee around like nine or 10, depending on when you wake up. That actually is supposed to help you with that afternoon slump when we often feel really tired and we have this sort of sugar caffeine craving. So I've been trying to do that and I think it does help. But I also think just getting enough sleep generally is over time gonna really help you. You need, you need more sleep at certain times of your menstrual cycle or your life cycle. And also you need more sleep depending on what you're doing, like how busy are you? And then the last thing that I struggle to do is not strength training regularly. I know how important having strong muscles are based on my medical background and just a lot of the re a lot of research that I've done and as I'm getting older heading towards that age where women can be more prone to osteoporosis and bone breakdown we know that muscle and maintaining muscle keeps people alive for longer it also improves their quality of life i don't know what it is but like a hundredfold it's it's extreme how how important it is and how it helps you manage falling if or balance so that you don't fall but if you do fall you have a lot more muscle to keep you going strong and you can live longer i mean i'm talking like 
doing the foundational stuff now in my like late 30s, early 40s, so that when I'm 80, like I can still go up and down a flight of stairs. I can still play tennis. Maybe I'll play golf by then, who knows? It's very important because we, we are living longer, but not necessarily with any good quality of life. We're just kind of sick and frail. And I don't wanna be like that. Mm -mm. I'm gonna be around for a long time. Strength training, so how can I do strength training? So my tendency is to wanna to go all in and like now strength train twice a day. And this is not a good, this is, I'm gonna fail, I'm gonna injure myself, it's not a good thing. I've set a goal of three times a week strength training and that's all I need to be doing. If I am moving furniture and organizing things in my home, which you know, does actually happen or I don't know, moving stones in my garden and stuff, maybe that counts as a strength training session, I'm keeping active but doing some kind of 20 minute strength training workout, lower body, upper body, use the Peloton app and I have a few weights. That's what I'm trying to do. Not gonna be perfect, but I'm gonna try my best. So those are the things that I've been struggling with lately and some ways that I've been trying to mitigate that and reconcile them. Let me know what you're struggling with, what you've been doing. And don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you've made it all the way to the end. I love you so much. You know that book? This is how much I love you. That's how much I love you. Uh, and I can't wait to see you in my next video. Bye. I'm gonna let the sun shine in the day. Trying to make this darkness go away